sort of sorry got Michael yeah, that's, okay. that's all right probably for a good hi reason. everyone hi guys hi Michael hi Amy how's it going good thank you good good to see you Cool. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for joining us um, live, guys. So if you guys are live with us, let me know where you are in the world. How are you doing? Are you staying self safe and healthy? Um, selfie. <laughs> are you staying safe and healthy? Um, are you? Yeah. How are you doing? Uh, so before we jump into our topic. <clears throat> oh, cool. We have someone online with us. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Thanks, Michael, that you tell us about your experiences. Love greetings from Switzerland. Thanks for joining us. Um, so if you're in the in the Facebook group, I only see Facebook user um, and I'll show you guys that. So I can't see your name. Um, so if you want to sign off with your name or enable me to be able to see you, uh, who you are, then please do so. If you're watching from the online paid health page, I'll be able to see who you are. Um, and we have a hi from New Zealand. Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Super cool. Um, okay, so before we actually jump in and get started, I have something that I ask everyone, um, and it's in related in relation to our Vet Rehab Summit, which is in November. I hope you guys have blocked your diaries and you're super excited. Our theme for this year is Research Meets Reality. Um, so I'm going to just throw this out there. Um, Amy and, and Michael, what is the research article that you quote most often, or what is the research that's made the biggest impact on your practice and way of thinking? So Amy, if you could start, and then Michael can, can answer. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I've i been doing a lot of reading about kind of the mechanisms and the why um, with regards to what we do. And a lot of that is taking me into the basic research, um, basic sciences, but things that are cutting edge and that are kind of brand new. So I'm reading right now an article about manual therapy and the mechanisms with regards to pain. Um, and that's, I think it's Bialowski um, in 2009. Um, so that's one that I'm really diving deep into right now and finding some great quotes, um, you know, some things that really ring true. And then the other part of my, you know, interest in research is on on neuroplasticity and manipulating uh, the nervous system and awareness and feedback through the sensory system and input that we provide both in neurological and in orthopedic cases. And so one of the pieces of research that I always go back to is by Loy and Breyer, and it's a neural regenerative research um, journal from 2019 talking about spinal cord injury and how the animal models have actually influenced human models in treatment of spinal cord injury. Um, and in our field, I think that that's so fascinating because we're using the animal models, the basic science, influencing human um, research and human treatment. And then that's also influencing, again, how we work with animals. So um, it really comes full circle, but um, some really exciting stuff out there. Oh, I love that. I love that. Michael? Yeah, well, I guess I'm still new at this field, very new, very green. Um, but I, I haven't really got access to the papers other than what people post up on online pet health and, you know, and, and some of the other forums that I'm on. So I, I, re I do read those papers from time to time. Um, I'm sort of doing a lot of online courses at the moment as well. So I'm sort of just everything is new to me and I just use it as a stepping stone um, to, you know, the next part of my journey. It, it's um, at the moment I'm doing, I'm doing a gate course. So um, just learning the basics all over again. And I don't think it hurts to go back to the basics to hurt, um, to do things. And it's actually helped me this week, you know, doing some of my, my work. So I'm just grateful that, you know, I can just be part of the profession. Um, in, you know, and involved in the way that I am. And yeah, it, it's pretty humbling, um, just, you know, being so green and feeling so new at this. So um, yeah, it, it's- So it, Amy, can you hear Michael clearly? I can, yes. Am I frozen, yeah. guys? No, no, you're not frozen. I, I can you're hardly good. hear what Michael is saying. Is that me oh. or is that Michael? I think um, it seems like audio is fine for me. Yeah, Michael. I can hear I can hear you both really well. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So maybe Anna is uh, kind of losing her her audio. Audio, a little bit. All right. Yeah. 
Well, maybe we should just keep on talking and then we'll see if she can hop back in. So, um, so I think our focus today was going to talk about cupping and uh, decompressive therapies and the rock pod specifically. Are you back? <laughs> can she hear us? Thanks, Amy. <laughs> hey, I'm not a very good I host. Couldn't hear most, I couldn't hear most of what, what, um, what Michael was saying there. Sorry, guys. Um, oh my gosh, we have so many people who have joined us. Welcome, Good. everyone. Florida, Luxembourg. Um, whoa, this is cool. Nova I'm Scotia. Sorry, really? Perfect. Perfect. Wow, super early. <laughs> yeah. So that's what it feels All like right. to me usually when I jump on online pet health at five in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Hey, back. Nice. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys, for joining us. So, Amy, did you just introduce our our topic? Are we jumping um, in? Good, but not in a lot of detail. So, feel free to jump in. Um, okay, cool. So, we're chatting about rock pods specifically, um, but we're gonna just like speak a little bit about cupping as well. Um, so, let's let's start with cupping. Um, and what is the theory behind that? And what is the mechanism of action? And while you're while you're answering that for for me, I think Amy, you're going to chat about that. Um, I also want to know from our listeners: Are you using cupping? And how are you using cup, cupping? What what um, what product are you using? How's it working for you? Uh, yeah, I'd love to know how you guys are using it. If you are using it, or if you're considering adding it to your toolbox, let us know that as well. Um, so, Amy, how does it work? So it, it, it's interesting because it really dates back quite a ways, you know, ancient times and using cups and, you know, clay cups and glass cups and things like that. And um, by applying the cup and heating the cup or more modern um, mechanisms using like an electrically produced suction, you create suction underneath the cup under the bell um, and that creates decompression. Um, It increases blood flow to the area, but then you have also the edge of the cup that provides some shearing and some mechanical compression. So you have a compression decompression, um, and then you can utilize the cup in in therapeutic ways as well and move the cups in certain ways to get like a myofascial shearing. Um, You know, really we're looking at the basics of blood flow and lymphatic flow, but also the mechanics of it um, in that compression compression and decompression, manipulating the fascia. But I also, like I said before, I like to look at the sensory um, aspects of it. Um, So the rock pods, I grabbed mine today. So I have, I think these are the medium ones. Um, you know, so you have it, they're silicone, so they're not a glass cup and they're not, you know, very substantial. They're, they're pretty manipulative. Um, but they have a cup to them where you can produce the suction and then they have a little handle, um, that actually can create, it's like a plunger. So you can create the suction manually, um, but then you can also use the handle to manipulate um, on the skin. And, you know, my own experience has been mostly in cupping with people in my physical therapy practice. And, you know, Michael said, hey, we can use this on animals, too. And I'm like, sure, let's let's do it. Let's try it. So, um, Michael, you have you come from a different perspective, though, a different background. And so, yeah, yeah, well, my my background's in well, it's it's more manual therapies with myotherapy, um, bone therapy, acupressure. So a lot of hands-on work that I do. I also do laser as well. Um, and I also do work with kinesio tape. And I love the fact that really rock pods to me are just an extension of kinesio tape in some ways because of what it can do to the proprioceptive feel of, of what you feel, of the body as well as, um, when I've been K-taped, I've been K-taped all over my body for various sporting injuries, um, and you can actually feel what it's doing to your body at a subconscious level as well in some ways because it's just sitting there and you can kind of just feel that it's on your body, whereas the rock pods are probably more of a uh, an active um, modality for short term, whereas rock tape you can have up to, on, on your body for up to three days. Whereas rock pods is, you know, anywhere between five minutes maybe for to 10 minutes for a person. Um, mm. But yeah, for, for the dogs, I've only been using it for a few minutes um, 
just to get the same effect. But um, but my background, yeah, is is more hands on, and I, I and I, I the first time I came across cupping was probably in the nineteen seventies when my dad got cupped by a friend that practiced traditional Chinese medicine, and all I remember is he'd come home, he'd have all these rings on his back, and going, where are they from? Um, you know, and then and then I, I went in and you know, to a few of his sessions and sort of you know this neighbor of ours friend neighbor used to cup dad and it's like oh that's kind of weird I had no idea what it was and then um, and then when I moved down to where I live now um, one of my therapists who was a manual practitioner dealing with one of my sporting injuries said oh do you mind if I do some cupping so she did some cupping on my back on my shoulder actually. Um, so that was my first experience of cupping it about oh, probably about 12 years ago. Um, and then, yeah, along the way, I came across the Rock Pod product uh, and I thought, mm -hmm. oh, that's kind of cool. So I got it for myself, actually, um, just to work, work on my sporting injuries because I talked to my physio a fair bit and he says, oh, you can try this, try that with a tape. Or awesome. with a pod. So, um, so when it came down to using the, the pods on the animals, um, I was doing, when I was studying bone therapy, uh, that's a lot of talk in bone therapy is about fascia. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's where kinesio taping is a really good modality for that. And it's just another way to move the fascia and to, um, to uh, I guess, coming from an architectural background, the analogy I gave the other day was, um, was is, with architecture, you're working with negative space. Um, and a rock pod and K-taping is a way to create some negative mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. as, in, as opposed to applying pressure on the skin, you're actually giving it the negative pressure to draw the skin away mm -hmm. to make, make space. And by making the space, then as, as Amy said, you can um, in, in influence the blood flow and the lymphatic flow to help mm -hmm. the body to, um, to hit, you know, restore itself and heal itself. Yeah. Okay, cool. We have so we have two questions here. Um, but but before I go into them, because I, I actually can't keep this to myself, and maybe Megan's not gonna be very impressed with me, but I can't I can't keep it to myself. Guys, she's in the hospital right now, so it's time for the baby. The baby's coming. <laughs> okay, Michael and Amy are good that. names. Sorry? Michael and Amy are good names. <laughs> <My limit. laughs> I'll tell her. I actually, I don't know if they've picked something, so we'll see. We'll see. So, holding Yay. thumbs all goes well, and um, very, very excited to see. Good luck, Megan. Soon. Thank you. Okay, cool. So, I'm gonna, Sarah. I'm gonna ask, ask the, the the next question first, and then come back to your question because I think that's gonna be a bit of an a longer um question. But um, hi from, I can't pronounce that. Uh, what size of cups do you use and where? I think they are in two sizes, the rock pods. So let's chat a bit about the sizes that the rock pods come in. Yeah, yeah I think if I'm not mistaken, I think they're actually three sizes. So I have four two. Um, I think they added a, you know, they have a small medium and a large now. Um, and, and honestly, I think the choice in modality and the choice in size, it's dependent on the patient. Um, you know, how much space do you have? Um, you know, obviously if you go bigger when the animal is moving, um, you're probably going to have a bit more of a challenge, um, with the suction and maintaining suction. So, um, so I tend to go a little bit smaller, um, in treatment areas, like Michael said, it's very similar to, you know, using rock tape or kinesiology tape in that, you know, you have a treatment location where you're trying to get that decompression. Um, and I like the rock pods for the ability to have a significant amount of decompression in an area that I can manipulate um, for short duration. Whereas kinesiology tape is maybe less of a decompression, but I can keep that on for longer. So I can send my hands home with my clients and with my patient. Um, but yeah, so I would tend towards the smaller sizes, um, but I can use them on various sized animals. So Michael, would you yeah, agree? I, I, I've only got the red pods. Well, when you buy the kit, you get four red pods which are about, I think they're about 50 millimeters. And, and I think the, the bigger ones, are the black ones, I don't know if I can sort of do a size yeah. comparison there or not. Um, I think these are about 50 millimeters and I think these are about 65 millimeters in diameter. 
They've got new ones, I think, which are about 85 millimeters. And maybe, I think there's a, two sizes that have come out. And I think the other one might be a bit bigger than that again, about 90 something millimeters. But I, I've, I can't, I've yet, unless you're working on a Great Dane, you probably don't need the really big ones. Um, yeah, mainly because of where you work on the body. Yeah, or, or horses. If yeah, or horses. If you're on horses, yeah like horses would definitely be the big one. Yeah. But they only, Rock Pod's only brought out the big size in the last two or three months, actually. Mm -hmm. So, um, and these have been around, I think, about three or four years now, maybe. Yeah. Sorry about that. I mean, and honestly, with Rock Pods, and not to endorse one specific product, but it's a great way for you to get your hands on and try cupping without a huge investment um, because they are, they're small, they're accessible, they're fairly cheap. Um, yeah. If you're finding that you're getting good success, then, you know, maybe you do want to invest in something that produces uh, a more sizable amount of suction and one that you can measure, you know, like the mm -hmm. electrical, you know, glass cup machines. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're just, the, the rock pods are quite cool, right? And I think that we also deserve to have toys that are fun to play with. And so I think that's really, it's a nice toy. It's a nice tool, it works, and it's colorful, and it's nice. So let's come back to Sarah's question here. Um, she would love to know how you get them to stick, especially if you're putting them on longer-haired dogs. Um, she's still struggling with that one. So one of the challenges, how do you get them to stick? Um. Look, on longer hair dogs, Sarah, it's pretty much you can't um, is the short answer. Um, the long answer is if you want to shave the dog, um, you might be able to do that if the owner's willing. Um, but I've got dogs who are show dogs and there's no way that, you know, I'm going to be shaving a you know long haired German Shepherd. Um, so I don't use these often um, primarily because there's – a fairly small percentage of patients that are, are actually you can use these which are applicable and they're the short-coated dogs primarily um you can kind of get it to work on a uh on a um like a little terrier dog with sort of a, a rough short rough coat but it is extremely challenging to get the the pods to stick so you're better off with a smooth coat or a short coat dog is is the best bet like a whippet coat or something like a German shorthead pointer or a Weimariner. They're the best ones. Um, you can use them dry on them, but the suction rate's not so great. Um, but there's different ways to achieve different levels of suction. Um, we can go into that later, but uh, you can use water. You just use spritz water on it. But the best thing that I've found to use is ultrasound gel and generous amounts of ultrasound gel and i usually put it around the perimeter of the cup and then and then apply it just by pushing the top of the pod down and, and it just sticks um so on human skin it's fine because it's there's no hair but yeah with with the hair you it creates an air um an air seal zone where it doesn't work or, or actually it's not a seal at all but yeah it breaks the seal so, yeah. Okay, yeah. so what what do you to add to that? Um, it, it, you know, I, I hate to change the direction because I know we're really focusing on the raw pods, but I think for us as just therapists to think about the appropriate case and what our goal is, and then what tools and toys do we have at our disposal that will meet that goal? So, you know, so if the rock pod isn't going to work, is kinesiology tape going to work? If that's not going to work, will we use like a hair clip? Um, you know, Lori Edge Hughes is great about using these, you know, just tools and devices that she's found. And, you know, can we do some hair pooling or some skin rolling and get kind of a similar effect that's more appropriate to that case. I think for the longer haired guys, I agree, it's it's really difficult. I mean, sometimes you can part and move the hair away and then clip down, um, you know, so it's less of a, uh, an issue for the pet owner, um, you know, and you can goop them up with gel, but I think maybe we need to look at a different technique or a different tool um, for mm -hmm. those cases. Yeah, and, and that's okay, right? Like we have we have tools in our toolbox, we have different modalities so that we can um, address the patient in front of us with what's appropriate for them. And that for sure might not be cupping. Um, right. So yeah, I really like that. Um, so 
so we've de basically discussed now that you know the vacuum creating that vacuum holding that seal is one of our biggest challenges are there any other ways other than shaving an ultrasound gel that we could potentially improve that vacuum we can use water you can spritz water okay, on water. it as well because right. that has a similar effect it just because it's so viscous though it doesn't have mm -hmm. once that water evaporates or dries or moves mm -hmm. it, it you lose that that potential suction or decompression seal All right. Okay. I think I think the challenge too with the um with the skin, you know, when you have an area, a lot of times when you're applying the cups or the pods, you're applying it in an area where you notice some tightness, like of the subcutaneous tissues or the fascia, where things just aren't moving very well. So that's a really appropriate place to to place the pods. Um, but you know, if you have an area of skin that's more mobile, or if the animal is more mobile, you know, it, that's going to ruin the suction as well. So a lot of times I try to stretch out the area and kind of get a little bit of a release of the tissue so you have kind of a taut area first and then apply the suction but then you have to maintain that for your treatment time um, and you might be limited in some of the techniques that you can perform at the same time mm -hmm. if the animal moves you know you might lose suction as well so mm -hmm. okay. yeah that's the other thing too is you have to have a patient that's willing to just to sit or lie you know because if they do move yeah. around i mean th there are benefits to the animal moving around in certain applications using the pods but yeah it, it's it, I, I was lucky in the patient that i used these recently for that i that i did the original posting i didn't actually think about using the pods the first time round because it didn't really cross my mind it wasn't until after when i was writing my notes up i'm going oh this is a perfect candidate to try and use the pods um because it fit all the criteria of you know short coat sizable area on the bot on the body on the on the on the lumbar sacral area where i was doing it and um yeah and and he was a relatively passive patient which makes it you know ticks the three boxes so yeah awesome. okay so we have another question here um is there an online training available to use cupping and i think that's a great question is there any training that you guys know of Rock Tape have got a course, which is um, a human course, uh, mm -hmm. but the principles all apply. And the course is an online course. It takes about an hour to do. Um, it gives you a little bit of history. It gives you application methods. Um, doesn't actually say anything about using the um, ultrasound gel, um, but that's just sort of something that I just, I can't remember where I, thought about using it but yeah that, that sort of just came along in the, in the process of it but yeah rock tape for their rock pods have got a course mm -hmm. online um i'm sure there are other if you want to do a traditional chinese medicine uh routes there are definitely courses that do acupuncture and tcm that do teach cupping uh traditional cupping um but I'm not too sure where there are courses that do that use the compression or the the, um, the compressor to uh, to teach. So th there was another vet rehabber that did a presentation from Denmark that mm. may be able to chime in if they're listening <laughs> as to where they may have done the course. For instance, because she she did the equine, she does equine. Yeah, um, yeah. Patients. Yeah, I think she does and I do the, Yeah. Yeah, I think I see more of the the coursework in equine therapy right now. I know mm -hmm. there are a couple of practitioners. I think maybe one in Switzerland. I know of one in the U.S. And it's again, it, it's not looking at the specific modality, but at the goal of treatment. And so, similar mm -hmm. to a lot of the rock tape courses, where they're utilizing um, you know rock floss, rock pods, rock tape you know, IASTM to accomplish that same goal. So um, the course that I know of in the US, it, it's very much um, focusing on that compression decompression mm -hmm. for a functional goal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we do have a, a webinar on the online pet health equine members portal. Um, Diana Lanskron presented that. Um, and she uses an um, an electrical cupping machine, which is really nice. And I, I really like the way that she 
really was using it to achieve, like to do different manual therapy techniques. So when you have that vacuum being created, you can you can move the cup around, slide it, um, you can really uh, manipulate the patients in different ways because the suction's being maintained um, through yeah through that electrical current. So that's quite useful if you guys want to watch that. Um, yeah, it's, it's not a really good webinar actually. Time. Oh, thanks, Michael. <laughs> so, yeah, really, really nice. Um, yeah, nice techniques and things taught there if you guys want to watch that. Um, then we've had a comment that says um, it works well with scar treatments when the coat has not yet grown back. Um, yeah, I like that idea. Good idea. Um, and another question, have you guys seen good results in cases of lumbosacral cases as an alternative to using muscle relaxants? wants to take that one. I would say, you know what, uh, honestly, like the lumbosacral area is definitely an area where I would use the pods and use um, decompression because I think it's it's very responsive. Um, I, you know, not being a vet, I don't really, you know, think about the medications that have been prescribed. I think, you know, when we're talking about muscle relaxants, we're talking about a systemic effect too, not as much a local effect. And I wonder if that is, um, you know, maybe a conservative approach of that veterinarian with regards to treating for pain. Um, you know, all of these modalities and tools and toys that we have, they're going to have short duration effects. But I think what it is, it's what you do afterwards and what you do to follow up and how what door that opens for you when you're releasing that area. Um, so is the patient going right back into that painful um, state where, you know, all the muscles are bound up and, you know, is that a compensation for weakness somewhere else? Is it a compensation for pain? You know, so I, I'd like to dive a little deeper in that, but I would not, um, look away from this as being an appropriate modality, um, to mm -hmm. decompress that area. I don't know, Michael, have you had experience in that area? Well, that's where I actually used it for the patient in the image that I put on, on, on the online pet health post and happen to be that area. I mean, it's perfectly suited because the cups fit there really well. You can use it along the, you know, the, the um, around the proximal limb, hind limb of the dogs. You can use it around the shoulder of the dogs as well. Um, you know, anywhere around the torso works really well for their pods, not so much around the distal limb, uh, depending mm -hmm. on the size of your patient, maybe the small one. I have tried using the small pod on shoulders uh, uh, on the actual shoulder joint. Um, but I'm limited with limited success because there's there's too many bony prominences where mm -hmm. you know the, you lose the suction. Um, but I, I thought, well, you know, I'll give it a go if I can try it. It, it, mm -hmm. you know, it may work, it may not, because I've actually used it on my shoulder, um, and it's you know, and I, I usually get out five days pain relief, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and the other day I actually fell asleep with the pot on by accident, and yeah, and. And I actually end up with about seven days of pain relief. <laughs> so, yeah, but I don't recommend that at home, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, oh, very lovely. relaxing. We've got a little bit of the bruise there. But, um, um, yeah. so, uh, sorry. So one of our, our viewers has asked, can we leave the link for the courses we mentioned at the end of the live? Um, so we can, but we'll have to go and find them as well. I don't have the link oh, to the rock. Um, you know, to rock, rock tapes course. Um, so you might you might have better luck um, just going onto the website and seeing if you can find yeah, that or probably, onto their Facebook page. Um, yeah. Maybe just pop them a message. And then I can certainly leave you the details for the webinar that we have in our equine platform for sure. I'm happy to do that. Um, yeah, and that's, yes. <laughs> Okay, um, and then thank you for answering my questions. It's a big pleasure, guys. We're here to answer your questions. So please, if you have a question, share it with us. Let us know. Um, we're, that's what we're here for. That's why we're here. Uh, so we are not actually, like, rock pods are a really new product, and cupping's been around for a very long time. Um, and there are quite a few different products. So have you guys, ha have you any experience with other products other products, glass cups, um, other ways of creating suction. I know you can use heat. Um, yeah, you can use other things to create that suction. So do you guys have any experience with other products other than rock pods? 
I've not really, um, like Michael, I tend to use my hands quite a bit and manipulating, you know, fascia and decompressing the area. I think we all love kinesiology tape for that prolonged decompression. Um, but no, I've not gotten my hands on like an electrically, um, you know, provided suctioning, um, or anything else, you know, and, and to be honest with you, um, you know, I think Michael would agree this is something that we've been playing with and trying. And it sounds like some people out there have also been playing with and trying. And so I think by getting us all here and talking about it, you know, can we devise, you know, some type of a protocol or some, you know, understanding of how to use it in clinical practice and what our expected outcome should be, you know, what are the mm -hmm. tips and the tricks and, you know, how do we get that out there and, and look at how this can be beneficial for, you know, more than just the standard, you know, case. So. Yeah, I love that. I think that that's um, exactly right. We are all kind of playing with this new modality or those of us who are playing with the new modality, like share, share, please do share with us if you're using this, if you're using a different kind of cupping. Um, I think it's really, yeah, it's, I mean, it's making a difference. We can see and feel the difference in our patients. So how should we be using it? Um, we have another question or our first question from Ryan. Thanks so much for joining us, joining us, Ryan. Um, how long do you typically apply for? So how long are you applying those rock pods? Um, well, I've been using them uh, for about four or five minutes, no longer. Um, primarily because the well, sometimes the patient's just not patient enough to lie there for you know <laughs> for that long too. Um, I know with acupuncture, sometimes the patient does lie down because it does have a you know an effect on the on the dog. These you know it, it really depends where they are and what the pressure feels like on the patient, whether they're actually you know receptive to that. Um, so probably just four or five minutes is max. Um, the other not risk you run, but if you leave them on too long, you you do you can bruise, and mm. that's rock pod don't recommend. They, actually, they, they recommend using it less than more as opposed to traditional cupping, which is a longer period of time. Because mm -hmm. with, with, with a traditional cup, you could put it on for 10 minutes, I guess, or maybe longer. Um, but with rock pods, even in their their seminar or their, their, their education program, you know, they don't leave it on. Sometimes it's only on for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, but there are different applications where you can just repeatedly take the pod on and off and apply this pressure uh, a manual pressure by just placing the cup on by squeezing it holding onto the skin and then lifting off um just to create some myofascial movement around the um you know the, the muscle and, and fascial tissue so yeah. yeah for my canine patients i haven't done more than five minutes yeah and i think the other thing too is they fall off sometimes anyway before that you know even with the gel exactly i think um to to have that um time limit, you know, as to the maximum that you're going to utilize it. And maybe if it's the first time using it with a patient, a shorter duration makes more sense. Mm -hmm. um, what I like to do is actually get that good suction and do kind of a static, um, just a release, and then encourage, you know, some active motion. So whether or even passive motion. So if I'm manipulating the cups, if I have multiple cups on, you know, I might try to get a little fascial release, but even utilizing the cups as an attention um, drawing tool. So providing that sensory stimulation while they're doing some type of activity or exercise, you know, so mm -hmm. can you use that um, intermittently? So, you know, again, it might be that these are just sitting in your toolbox next to you, you know, you're grabbing them when you need them and, and using them at will, but I wouldn't uh, use them more than like three to five minutes in any one specific location. Okay. So we've just had a comment come through, which ties in with what we've said. I see you guys that came before and we're going to cover those. But um, our viewer says that she's tried glass and other plastic cupping sets, but it doesn't fit for dogs or doesn't hold. So now she's going to try the rock pods. Cool. <laughs> okay. So really good. Let us know what your there. results are. Yeah, <laughs> we want to know. Yeah. Please. Post yeah. them online or post them on the, on the, yeah. On the group, yeah. 
Um, and so this is really important and also ties in what, with what we're talking about, but um, does it hurt for the animals or can you actually do something wrong? Um, so yeah, that's a really important one for us to chat about as well. Yeah, generally, think, you, go know, ahead, no, sorry. you go, ladies first. Oh no, I think it just in general, we need to certainly be aware of any precautions and limitations in using the modality, um, whether it's the patient that we select or the location that we're selecting. I think the longer duration, you're gonna run a higher risk of having problems. Um, if there are clotting issues or blood flow issues um, systemically, if they're on medications that might lead um, to more likely um, integumentary, you know, or skin issues. I think we need to be cautious of that. I think you can cause dis discomfort with the pods. So we really have to attend to our patient and, and be aware of their response um, and communicate with the pet owner as well, you know, as to how they're doing after the treatment. Um, like mm -hmm. Michael said, our goal is not to um, make them uncomfortable or um, have pain or discomfort as a result of the treatment, but that could be a side effect and it's giving us some feedback that maybe we shouldn't be as aggressive um, mm -hmm. about our therapy in the future. Um, and bruising is certainly not a goal. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, blood flow is good, but you know, sometimes too much is too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, awesome. yeah. Um, and no so open wounds or anything like that as well. Yeah, okay. definitely, yeah. Um, so Barbara Reiner says, addition, in addition to the scar treatments, she's also used it in the lumbosacral area on the underwater treadmill. So that's quite interesting. Um, Barbara, how did how did that go? Did they stick? You know, were they um, did they adhere properly? Were you like how long did you keep them on in there? Did you kind of take it on and take it off? Um, yeah, how did you do that? That's quite a good a good way, I think, to include movement into mm -hmm. the into the treatment. Hmm. Um, and have you guys tried on felines? That's a great question. Any cats? Have you done any cats, guys? <laughs> My face says it all. No, <laughs> I've not been so brave. But, you know, it, again, I, I do think a lot of it has to do with the mobility of the skin. Right. Yes. I think the yes. most successful yeah. treatment has been when there is that tightness or adhesion mm -hmm. or, you know, fibrosis or swollen area. Um, in general, cats are going to have more mobility. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't think that we can stand back and say, no, don't use it with cats. I think we have to try, but we have to be really mm -hmm. wise in, in the patient that we select. I think it might have to be like a big cat like Megan's worked on in the past, you know to have enough muscle area uh, like most most cats are probably too small to even use the small pot on as well mm -hmm. i would think um, and the coat too for most cats that might be a little bit long um yeah but hey it'd be worth trying you know what well, doesn't hurt to try it's not going to hurt the animal so yeah patient. And what if they like that? What if they enjoy the decompression as as opposed to the direct pressure that we could mm. otherwise be applying? So that might be actually something that they prefer. I don't know. That's but really maybe the right point point. aren't the right, you know, the right tool for it. I don't know. That's, that's actually a really good point because I think my experience in handling cats is that they tend to like the lighter, more decompressive. Yeah things rather than the heavier, more approximation waiting um, mm -hmm. types of things. So they actually might be very well responsive to it. Mm -hmm. yeah, so coming back to, <laughs> so back to Barbara chatting about using it in the underwater treadmill, she says about 10 minutes she leaves them on. Yeah, so that's yeah. quite quite nice. nice. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so guys, keep your questions rolling if you have any or wanna add any comments or thoughts. Um, I'm going to change our track now a little bit because um, we're talking about research. We're talking about how that comes into reality, how that comes into our practices. So I really want to know from you guys, is there any research or evidence that supports cupping in animals? Um, and yeah, what, what maybe is there anything we can expect in the future? Are you guys working on something? And yeah, let's always come back to like, what is the evidence and and why are we using something? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I did a um, a quick PubMed search, and there there is 
um, research published on the use of cupping in human patients for various reasons. Um, certainly less than I think it's been utilized um, because I think it, it's been traditionally unusual for Eastern medicine approaches to, to publish in Western medicine journals. Um, but when you look at animals and cupping, there's really not anything out there. I found one article that talked about um, wet cupping, which is actually bloodletting with cupping um, in Arabian horses, which I'm, I'm not going to be the one to do that. Um, they're, you know, they were looking at kind of the blood parameters and, and all of that um, as well. So I don't think it was looking at the right variables for me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Michael can speak on this. I've been encouraging him to write things up. I mean, I think all of us, regardless of how much experience we have, we need to get the word out there. We need to share what we know, share what we've tried, learn through our mistakes, learn through our patients and our clients and, you know, and get these reports out there. So whether they're in newsletters or in Facebook lives or in research journals, you know, we really do need to share. So, um, you know, Michael's writing things up as we speak, um, you know, and getting the word out. And I think I'd love to see, you know, some of the people out there speaking up about their own experience to kind of come together and, you know, let's talk about how this works and how it doesn't work. And, you know, it, you've got to start somewhere, you know, whether with a mm -hmm. protocol or not, you know, we all love to be so creative in our therapies, but we've got to start you know, kind of that one, two, three, um, and then look at our outcomes and, you know, and then we can start to be creative and more experiential um, in our therapies. So I think more to come. Yeah. I mean, the only point of reference I've got really for the education is what's been done on me and what I've seen in that um, equine webinar on cupping mm -hmm. and how I was using the cups on myself was pretty much what, was being done on the equine. So I figured, well, at least I've got the right sort of, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm halfway there at least to being in the, going in the right direction. Um, so, you know, if I figure I'm not doing any harm um, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to, you know, the end goal is to try and make the patient feel better, um, I kind of figure, well, it, it's a win win. It's a little bit, yeah, it is a little bit of a left field modality. Um, mm -hmm. in, in, in as far as using the rock pods per se, I can't say mm -hmm. that about cupping generally, but yeah, it, it's um, but you know, I, I know when I use it on me and my sporting injuries, I do get a positive result, you know. So, mm -hmm. and I'm you know, I can say, you know, I can definitely get five days, you know, I, I've used the laser on myself, and I know I can get about five days pain free on certain parts of my body, and I'm getting similar results with the rock pods. So, I'm just mm -hmm. using myself as a guinea pig, but I kind of figure, well, you know the lasers and, and, and the rock pods are being used on humans and that's where all the research is. Mm -hmm. well, I'm trying it on myself, you know, it works. I've tried it on my kids and, you know, they haven't complained. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, yeah. so we still have a ways to go, but, uh, yeah, let's go there together. So I could, Amy, you said it really brilliantly and I don't really have much to add except to say, if you guys are using these modalities, why not chat to each other, get together with Michael and Amy, see if we can pull something together, pull our data and mm -hmm. yeah, get something out there. If we're not, if we're not going to be the ones to take the steps, then, then who is? Um, and I'd like to add to that. I actually, um, we had a, I had a bit of a conversation with Auntie Van der Volt in a different Facebook group where um, she was playing devil's advocate, which she loves to do and is one of my absolute favorite things. If I find a Facebook post and Auntie says, I'm gonna play devil's advocate, so then I get really excited because she just goes straight into like a no-nonsense approach of why are we publishing evidence that isn't, um, that isn't going like, of the highest possible quality. So standing at the starting line now, here we are at the start of looking at cupping and ro rock pods in our in our animal patients. Let's get together, talk about it, create you know a proper plan, and get something published that's going to be really valuable to the people who read it, um, and that we can take back to clinical practice. So yeah, guys, get in touch with each other. Let's. Um, Let's see where this takes us and where we can go from here. I'd love to hear what other people are doing too, personally, because you know I think we can all definitely learn from each other on this. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think yeah. Barbara, uh, you know, she mentioned the lumbosacral area and I know someone else had commented on that. I mean, that's a great place to start, right? It's an accessible area. We have a lot of patients who have lumbosacral issues, whether primary or secondary. You know, let's all just dive in, take those rock pods and let's try to decompress that lumbosacral area if it's appropriate, you know, and if that's our goal and see what our results are. You know, look at, you know, what is our treatment protocol? How long are we going to leave it on? You know, what are the parameters we're using it with? So I think it's genius too with the underwater mm -hmm. treadmill. Yeah, you've exactly. got the water, you've got movement, mm -hmm. you've got the pods on there. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. I can. Um, so I think what let's tackle one more question here. Um, Amy mentioned the hair clip method. Amy, can you explain what that is? Yeah, I don't have a hair clip in right now. All right, so I'm gonna attribute this to uh, Lori Edge Hughes, who is just, you know, the genius, the, I don't wanna call her the grandmother of animal rehab or canine rehab, but the mom of, of canine rehab. So Lori, again, very practical, um, has suggested, you know, why do we need to put the pods on or the tape on, especially on these long haired dogs? So she had Shelties and she found that just a big hair clip, you know, the, I would put my hair up in and it's got those little teeth or whatever. You just pull it in that area of treatment and leave it on, you know, during therapy. So, you know, by pulling the hair and this is me on the sensory side, I love sensory integration and, and sensory accessing our patients. Um, but by pulling the hair, by manipulating the skin, we're accessing a lot of different um, sensory receptors below the skin and in those subcutaneous tissues. You know, we're going to change the fascial tone. We're going to decompress that area. We're going to get that nice little pool um, and we can leave it on for a long period of time. And it's also something that, that the owner can utilize at home. So you're using it as a sensory approach and creating more attention or more feedback to the patient. But I think you can also use it mechanically to get some of that decompression. So using hair clips, like we would use the pods, you know, and that might be, um, maybe we can get hair clips that are cute, like black and red, right? Like the pods <laughs> have our little set, but you, know, you use the pods on the short haired guys and you use the hair clips on the long haired guys. So yeah. Um, and again, trademark, copyright, Lori Edge Hughes, but um, it's a great method. So it's genius. Okay, okay cool. I like it. Um, Barbara Reiner says it's just a big ultrasound gel battle on the underwater treadmill. So <laughs> I love it. Valid. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, thank you, Michael, and thank you, Amy, for coming to share yeah, your experiences with this modality. Um, and your also plans going forward. So really, really exciting. Uh, if you guys are watching as a recording, feel free to post your questions. Uh, one of us will get back to you. And it's been really great chatting with you guys. I hope you all have a wonderful day further. And let us know what you guys are getting up to. It's always great to hear from you. Bye. Awesome. Great to no. see you guys. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you.